Good morning and thank you all for joining. I want to take this moment to introduce you to Malcolm. His story is just one example of a person that has endured systemic racism and a reason to have conversations around addressing racism at every level to build communities where every person has a chance to thrive. Malcolm is an African-American Black man born and raised in downtown Elyria. Like 65% of other Black African-American children in Lorraine County, he was born into poverty. But he did not allow that to determine his trajectory in life. As a child, Malcolm was able to overcome achievement gaps 2.4 times of his white classmates and became one of the 12% Black African American in Lorain County to pursue and obtain a bachelor's degree. After graduating college, Malcolm struggled to find employment, similar to that of other 12% Black African Americans who are unemployed in Lorain County. Eventually, Malcolm was able to find a job where he now felt comfortable supporting his pregnant wife and two-year-old son on their household income of $32,000, lower than the Lorain County median income and two times lower than the median income of a white household. With the new job and a child on the way, Malcolm decided it would be a perfect time to enter into the 41% of Blacks that own homes compared to 59% of renters in Lorain County. Soon after closing on a new home, Malcolm unfortunately learned about infant mortality's effect on the Black community when his family's newborn infant became a part of the 13 deaths per 1,000 live Black births. I know I'm not doing justice to Malcolm's life as he would be telling his own truth, but unfortunately, Malcolm could not be here with us today like that of many people of color that were disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, his life was cut short. I am Fallon Peterson, and I am the Health and Social Services Program Officer with the Nord Family Foundation. Thank you all for joining us for such an important conversation. With the support of the Nord Family Foundation, the Center for Community Solutions embarked on a project to create a comprehensive report detailing racial disparities in Lorain County as they currently exist. This report, created for Lorain County stakeholders, examines cross-sectional data related to income, employment, housing, poverty, education, and health. This is an opportunity to share the findings and discuss the implications. The report will be shared by the Center for Community Solutions, directly followed by open question and answer, and then community conversations through breakout groups. I am very pleased to welcome Emily Campbell for our event today. Emily serves as the Associate Director for the Center for Community Solutions and holds the Williams Family Fellow for Applied Research. We look forward to her sharing the racial disparities in Lorain County report and facilitating this conversation along with other Center for Community Solutions staff. I will now pass things over to Emily. Thank you, Fallon, and good afternoon, everyone who has joined us today. Um, I was mentioning before, I'm so happy to see so many familiar names and a few familiar faces on the screen today. Um, I know that some of you had the opportunity to see some of this information, gosh, was it just last week, um, when we shared it with a few community stakeholders and made a couple of tweaks based on some feedback that we received from that meeting, but we are so pleased to share it with all of you today. I posted in the chat a link to the full set of slides and the full report. Most of the content that you'll see today is taken directly from that report. Um, so if you wanna check it out later, uh, take a look at it, dig through it, please feel welcome to do so. Um, as you probably heard, this webinar is being recorded. We are planning to post the presentation on the website so that those people who aren't able to attend one of these events 
can also see the information. But when we get to the breakout conversations, those will not be recorded. And we would really encourage you to share your honest feedback and thoughts in those conversations. So thank you to Fallon for the kind introduction and to the Nord Family Foundation for supporting this important work. The Center for Community Solutions was delighted to partner with Nord Family Foundation to pull together data on a bunch of different issues that show racial disparities in Lorain County and to put it all in one place together. Before we get started, I wanna provide a little bit of context. The data and information that you will see today is the results. These are the outcomes. Although many, many of these issues are correlated, they go together, they tend to work together in people's lives, they don't really say anything about the causes of some of the racial disparities and the causes of some of the outcomes that we see. Another really important thing to note is that most of the data was collected in 2019. It's 2019 data pre-pandemic. So we know that a lot of things happened during 2020, both in terms of health, social, and economic conditions, of course, but then also in terms of racial equity and understanding about the importance of race and racism in our communities. So as I mentioned, most of the data comes from 2019, almost all of it. We consider this data to be really baseline information on which communities can build as we hopefully build back better and we come out of the COVID crisis. So in this report, we have collected data from lots of sources and, and lots of different places. We, most of it is information that is relatively readily available in the community, but we were also helped along the way by several organizations that we wanted to recognize. These include Lorraine County's county government, um, as well as the Lorraine County Sheriff and Lorraine County Public Health, Team NEO and Healthy Northeast Ohio that provided some data to us that we were able to analyze and include in the report. Our objective was to compile and collect in one place data on racial disparities in Lorraine County across various public systems. We sought data sources that were reliable, consistent, and updated, and relied on local, federal, and uh, state sources. In doing some digging, the Center for Community Solutions team collaborated with the Nord Family Foundation team to identify indicators that would be of particular interest and try to find out where we could get that information. And we are so pleased to share some of those findings with you today. One additional note, we weren't able to find everything that we wanted to look at. You will see at the end of the report and at the end of this presentation, some additional places that we had really hoped to be able to present some data, but we're not able to find that from readily available sources. So, you know, one of the next steps, I think, is to make sure that good data on information broken down by race and ethnicity is collected and made available so that communities can analyze it as try when they are trying to determine what to do next how to design programs and responses that can improve community conditions. The events of 2020 laid bare many issues and we've seen how things disproportionately impact certain pockets of the population. As I mentioned, most of this data is pre-pandemic and what we're seeing are indicators of disparities getting worse, unfortunately, not better. Everything that you'll see today is uh, in the report on our website. So let's dive in. We wanted to ground everything in this report in data. And here you can see how the population of Lorraine County breaks down. Lorraine County is a racially and ethnically diverse community, yet 85% of the people who live in Lorraine County are white. We see this played out in communities across Ohio. On the other hand, Lorraine County is home to the highest concentrations of Hispanic or Latino residents in the state. This demographic data comes from the US Census Bureau, which classifies things a certain way. White and black are considered to be races, but Hispanic or Latino is considered to be an ethnicity. So people who are Hispanic or Latino can be of any race. You'll notice that we tried to use the same colors consistently throughout the report. So we often have, um, the data for people who are white in the blue, 
those who are Hispanic or Latino in the kind of pink color. And then in the red is the data for people who are black or African American. We know that there are other racial and ethnic groups that are disproportionately impacted by many of the issues that we're gonna talk about today. But unfortunately, the data is often not available for them. We are doing our best to present things for other groups that live within communities, including Asians and Asian Americans, as well as Native Americans and Pacific Islanders. But for Lorain County, that data really wasn't available. So we're left with looking at things Black and white and the Hispanic and Latino population. So the difference between race and ethnicity really matters for this slide because um, you will not see the Hispanic or Latino population on this particular slide. We have it in a, in a pre next one. When we look at the data by age, you can immediately see that children are the most racially diverse population in Lorain County which indicates the community is going to become more diverse, not less. In particular, you see a, a larger share of people who are two or more races, so kind of the multiracial, multi-ethnic, who identify themselves as being from two or more races. It's the darkest red bar over there on the right side. In the oldest age group, we also know that something that is happening is unfortunately the differences in life expectancy and the fact that Black and African American residents have a shorter life expectancy and are more likely to die at a young age. And so when we look at the oldest generation or the oldest population, it is much more heavily white than other ages. On this slide, as promised, you can see the percentages for Hispanic and Latino people in the community. The share of children who are Hispanic or Latino is more than three times greater than older adults in Lorain County. And here's where people live. As you can see, there are pockets of uh, people who are white, people who are Black or African American, and people who are Hispanic and Latino spread throughout the community, although there are some concentrations probably in the places where you might expect to see them as people who are living and working in Lorain County. While the rural parts of Lorain County and the suburbs are mostly white, the cities of Elyria and Lorain are much more racially and ethnically diverse. So as we go through all this data, I'd ask you to kind of keep in mind these maps and where people who may be experiencing these issues disproportionately may live. Let's start to talk about some of the issues that imp impact different population groups. And we're gonna start with children and education. Black and African-American children in Lorain County are four times more likely than white children to be living in poverty. For Hispanic and Latino children, it's three times more likely to be living in poverty. These are the official poverty rates from the US Census Bureau looking just at children. What this tells us is that almost two thirds of black or African American children in Lorain County are growing up in poverty. And poverty has profound impacts over the course of someone's life. In fact, poverty is considered to be so impactful that it makes it on the list of the adverse childhood experiences, which are considered to be things that can impact someone's health throughout the course of their life. And poverty is closely tied to just about every other health, social, and economic condition, either as a cause or consequence of poverty. When we turn to look at educational outcomes, we know that the education system is often a place where children can overcome their disadvantages. The education system, uh, considered very broadly, is a way that we think about preventing poverty in the future generation. But across the board, we see that disparities exist between Black and African American students and Hispanic and Latino students and white students when it comes to academic proficiency. Throughout these next few charts, the higher the bars, the more um, proficient, the, the larger the percent of students who are proficient in a particular subject. We're using that same color scheme here that I mentioned before. We're only able to show data for two school districts that have the highest populations of Black or African American and Hispanic or Latino students. Elyria is on the left, Lorraine is on the right, and you'll notice that those red bars representing Black and African American students are lower. 
both for third grade English language arts, third grade math in both of those school districts. And here we see the eighth grade proficiency rates where some of the racial disparities are even more stark. Again, we have Elyria on the left, Lorraine on the right, and those same colors going through. And these disparities in educational achievement play out so that white students are more likely than black and African-American students to be enrolled in educational opportunities like gifted and talented programs and AP classes. There's not only a proficiency gap, but there's also an opportunity gap. And white students are 2.4 times more likely than black or African-American students to enroll in gifted and talented programs in AP classes in Lorraine County, or excuse me, in the Lorraine School District. And in Elyria, white students are 3.7 times as likely to enroll in those advanced classes and educational opportunities. We also see some of this in the outcomes on educational attainment. There are disparities in educational achievement and opportunity that result in lower educational attainment for Black and African American residents and for Hispanic and Latino residents overall. So you see the percent of adults who have graduated from high school there on the left. If you kind of flip it, it means that only 9% of white, white adults in Lorain County do not have a high school diploma or have completed their high school education. It's 19% who do not have that level of educational attainment for Black and African American adults and 27% for Hispanic and Latino residents. And when we look at the share of adults who have a bachelor's degree or higher, we see these differences continued. It's even larger. 26% of adults in uh, Lorraine County who are white have at least a bachelor's degree compared to just 12% of Black and African American adults and 13% of Hispanic or Latino adults. Now we know that educational attainment often determines uh, employment opportunities and the kinds of jobs that someone will be able to, um, to get later in life. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment, but we also wanted to have a focus on um, some both achievement as well as school discipline. All of the data presented so far adds up to this achievement gap that you see. So Lorraine, students in Lorraine County who are Black or African American um, are on average one grade level behind their white peers. And it's 1.9 grade levels behind their white peers for students from the Elyria School District. We've seen data that has been released just this month indicating that that the impact of the pandemic and remote learning has left children of color even further behind than their white peers. And so we're very concerned that we'll see these gaps get bigger, not smaller. And it's not just about classroom instruction. Here you also see school discipline data. Black and Latino students are around two to three times as likely to be suspended. And we really worry about suspensions because it takes students out of the classroom. And so it can perpetuate some of these negative cycles. This brings us right in to looking at data for the justice system. And this is an area where we see very large and serious disparities between people of color and white people in Lorain County. Racial disparities in discipline start in school and they persist in the criminal justice system. So the next couple of slides that you'll see shows the total population on the left and for this slide, the justice involved youth on the right. So places where you see the right bars larger than the left bars or the darker bars larger are places where um, certain groups are disproportionately represented among the justice involved youth. Black and African American youth make up just 11% of the population, but 40% of the justice involved population in Lorain County. <coughs> The disparities were even wider for youth who were incarcerated in juvenile detention in 2020. You read this chart the same way. And overall, on average, Black or African American youth spent two extra weeks incarcerated compared to their white counterparts. There was a difference between Hispanic and non-Hispanic youth, but it wasn't statistically significant. 
so we did not report it. Research shows that the longer that someone is just as involved or detained, the greater impact on their future prospects. And continuing into adulthood, Black and African American residents are significantly more likely than white residents to be incarcerated. At the bottom of this chart, you have the racial demographics of adults for the entire county, and you see a big difference in the size of those red bars for adults who are in jail or who are in prison from Lorain County. Now, of course, there are causes and effects here. We know that being incarcerated or justice involved increases the chances of future justice involvement, of unemployment, and of a host of other issues. We also know that people who grew up or live in poverty are more likely to be justice involved and involved in the criminal justice system, either as a perpetrator or as a victim of a crime. We are seeing here the quantification in differences in policing over generations, and we see it across the country as well. Again, these are the results. They are not necessarily the causes. If you would like to talk more about the uh, justice system, I would encourage you to join that breakout session when we get to that point in the, pre the event today. Shifting gears to continue talking about adults and to also look at some economic data. We shared the differences in poverty rate for children of different races and ethnicities in Lorain County. Here you see the overall poverty rate for people of all ages. In Lorain County, Hispanic and Latino people are more than three times as likely to be living in poverty than white people, while the poverty rate for Black and African American people is four times higher. In Lorain County, median household income for white households is 1.7 times that of Hispanic and Latino households and twice as high as that of Black or African American households. Now, median household income is the point where half of households earn left, less and half of households earn more. So half of the households in Lorain County are even below these numbers. Of course, household income is directly tied to poverty and very tied to employment. And this is another area where we see racial disparities. So if you look at the people graphics here on the top of this slide, you'll see that this is actually one of the smaller disparities that we've noticed between the data for different races and ethnicities. Black and African Americans have the lowest labor force participation at 52%, but it isn't that different from the white labor force participation rate of 61%. Labor force participation is the share of adults who are either employed, they have a job, or they are actively looking for work but we see a much larger disparity when we look at the data presented at the bottom for unemployment. So while the labor force participation rates are not as stark as some of the other data that we're looking at, we still see very large differences in unemployment rate between white residents, Hispanic or Latino residents, and black residents. And in fact, Hispanic and Latino workers are 2.6 times more likely than their white counterparts to be unemployed. And for Black and African American workers in Lorain County, it was 3.3 times more likely. Again, this is pre-pandemic data from 2019 from a period when we had almost record employment. And so this data has become even more stark and even larger disparities over the course of the pandemic. And it's one of the things that Community Solutions continues to track is how people are being helped or are being left behind in the economic recovery now that the COVID crisis is receding. Another key factor in household income is a person's occupation. You know, often the occupation that you're working in kind of determines how much you can expect to earn. In general, white workers in Lorain County are disproportionately represented in higher wage occupations. Now your occupation is influenced by a variety of factors. One obvious one is educational attainment. And so many of the jobs that pay higher wages are ones that require advanced degrees or additional credentials. And we already saw that fewer people um, within Lorain County who are black or African-American or Hispanic or Latino are reaching that level of uh, educational attainment. That means that they'll be shut out of some of these higher wage occupations that require higher education. 
or credentials. The amount of money you earn determines whether or not your entire family is living in poverty. And it's also important for how many resources are available to families and households. Again, we're looking here at pre-pandemic data on internet access. And we found that white households are 2.7 times more likely than black and African-American households and 1.6 times more likely than Hispanic and Latino households to have internet access. We saw during the pandemic how important internet access was to be able to connect with the outside world for many people to continue if they were able to work remotely or to participate in virtual schooling. Close to one third of black or African American residents in Lorain County, the households did not have internet access pre-pandemic compared to one in five Hispanic and Latino households and just 12% of white households. Now we know that there has been a lot of efforts, especially by school districts and by community organizations to get people connected to high speed internet. And so we're waiting to see when new data comes out, what this may look for for our communities and whether these, these uh, disparities have grown or we're hoping this is a place where we may, may see disparities shrinking. When we think about resources, one key thing is the ability to afford your housing. And Black and African American households are 2.5 times more likely to rent their home than white houses. So when we think about housing tenure, whether you rent or own, it's about resources, but it's also about building wealth. Home ownership has traditionally been sort of the American way for um, moderate income families to build wealth and to pass that wealth down through generations. So families who historically rent are not able have not been able to build that wealth. Looking at the two bars in the lower right, renters in Lorain County are more likely than owners to be living in unaffordable housing situations where they're paying 30% of their household income or more oh, in on, housing me, expenses. I, I know they're gonna do a breakout. What that means is that those families do not have a lot of extra resources to use for other things and can often be stretched. Again, when we look at that tenure data by race, it's immediately clear that fewer black households rent, or more black households rent, excuse me. These charts you read a little bit differently than the previous ones that we looked at. The mm -hmm. totals add up to 100%. So 41% of black households in Lorain County are homeowners and 59% rent. One interesting thing to note is that we see that in Latino households, that home ownership bar is much larger. 80% of Latino households own their homes. So this may be a real opportunity for community building because we, we know that homeowners are less likely to move over a certain period of time than people who are renting. Looking at homeless data, here's another one where you see the racial demographics of adults in Lorain County versus the share of adults who are homeless and black and African-American adults are significantly more likely than white adults to be homeless in Lorain County. So, you know, of course, homelessness is sort of the, the end of the spectrum um, of housing stability and a real concern not only for adults, but also for children within the community. Now we wanna look at data on health. And emerging research over the last couple of years has shown the connections between some of these economic factors and health and between racism and health and the outcomes for different people. What we found is that racial disparities in Lorain County begin at birth and compound over the course of the lives of residents. And there are wide disparities between black and African-American infants and white infants when it comes to birth outcomes. For those of you who participated in uh, our last meeting, this data is a little bit different. We were able to um, obtain some good updated data for Lorain County from Lorain County Public Health. And so this does reflect Lorain County statistics. Um, there were many more infant deaths proportionately among Black and African American babies than among their white counterparts. And Black babies were more likely to be born at low birth weight or to be born prematurely, which directly impacts infant mortality. 
It's my understanding that there may be some additional resources coming to the Lorain County community to really combat some of these issues. And there are some roadmaps from communities across the state that have made great strides in reducing infant mortality, especially for black infants that have brought their whole rate for their entire community down. And I know that there has been significant progress in Lorain County over the last couple of years. This data we had to combine several different years, so looks at uh, the years from 2015 to 2019 combined. We also see that Black and African American and Hispanic and Latino residents face poor health outcomes on many indicators than their white counterparts. Here you see data for health insurance. We know that people with health insurance are more likely to um, seek care, to get care, to have health issues taken care of, to catch chronic diseases earlier and have their chronic diseases better managed. Black and African American children are 2.4 times more likely than white children to be uninsured in Lorain County. And it's the same 2.4 times more likely for Hispanic and Latino people than white people of any age in Lorain County to be uninsured. Although white people have a higher incidence of cancer than black and African American people, black people have higher death rates due to cancer. So, you know, the, the ultimate bad outcome um, in death, we're seeing some pretty serious disparities. And black and African American people face higher death rates than white people for most chronic diseases. Here you can see the death rate due to diabetes, broken down by race and ethnicity, due to stroke, the death rate due to coronary heart disease, to Alzheimer's and chronic lower respiratory disease. So really just about any health condition we look at, we see worse outcomes for African-American and black residents than we do for white residents. And we have all seen the news, we, we know that during the COVID-19 pandemic, we are seeing the perpetuation of some of these racial disparities um, played out in real time in a very stark manner. So this data has also been updated from the last time we shared it and is, um, was accessed on August 2nd, so is from earlier this month. We see over the course of the pandemic, these tall bars are the percentage of COVID-19 cases, the percentage of hospitalizations, the percentage of deaths, and then there at the end you see the total population. And so while the percentage of cases in, um, in Lorain County, there, there is a smaller percentage of cases among people who are Black or African American than the total population, the hospitalizations are higher and the deaths are very close. I want to point out that there are a lot of unknown race in this data because of the way it's collected. You see those kind of larger gray bars there at the top, and we don't know um, where the people who are in that category may fall in this. We also unfortunately see that white people have significantly higher vaccination rates in Lorain County than Black and African American people and Hispanic and Latino people, although these bars are starting to catch up. And there has been evidence um, that there are additional barriers that Black and African American people and Hispanic and Latino people are facing when accessing the vaccine. The Center for Community Solutions is analyzing some data right now that we expect to put out in about a week and what we're seeing is that uh, Black or African American residents of Ohio are the most likely to say that they probably will or definitely will get a vaccine if they remain unvaccinated. They just haven't done it yet or been able to do it yet. And so finding ways to connect people to vaccination continues to be very important as uh, we try to continue to combat the Delta variant and the COVID-19 pandemic. So the, these are the same maps that you saw at the beginning that show where people live by different races and ethnicities in Lorain County. I ask you to keep this picture in mind as we flip to the next map. So this is overall population, and this shows life expectancy. And you can see that the life expectancy at birth varies widely throughout Lorain County, and in many cases mirrors maps showing those racial demographics. We see it very starkly played out. And in some cases, there are wide disparities in life expectancy between neighborhoods just a few streets apart. Life expectancy really pulls together all of the conditions of well being, of health, social, and economic conditions um, into one kind of marker that we look at about the viability 
um, and the conditions facing different parts of our community. So life expectancy in the neighborhood surrounding downtown Elyria is 64.8 years. This neighborhood is 22% Black and African American. In the nearby Eastern Heights neighborhood, the life expectancy is 80.2 years, and this neighborhood is 87% white. So we see a difference of over uh, 15 years of life expectancy between two census tracts and two areas that are very close together. In fact, just right next to each other. The poverty rate in downtown Elyria is one of the highest in the country. 52% of residents living in this area are below the poverty line. We know that population loss has happened in this area over the course of decades. And what has happened is that poverty in these neighborhoods has become concentrated. The impacts of racism compound throughout the life cycle and ultimately black and African American people have lower life expectancy than white people. Black and African American life expectancy is nearly five years less than white life expectancy in Lorain County. This is uh, updated data. We saw some even newer data come out that show that the disparities between black and African American people across the country and white people, again, are getting worse and not better during the pandemic. So we have made our way very quickly through an, an awful lot of data want to talk a little bit about what is next before opening up the floor to questions with the full group and then we will break into a couple of different breakout sessions so that we can continue the conversation. As I mentioned at the top of the presentation, there were a couple of areas that we would have really liked to examine, but the data wasn't available. Um, it isn't collected in particular and we just weren't able to get to it. And these are areas that we would really like to be able to investigate further to understand conditions within the community and are going to be continuing to work to see if we can try and get some of this data broken down by race and ethnicity. Go ahead and restart the recording and um, send it over to Fallon to close us out. Thank you so much, Emily, and thank you so much, everyone, for attending. We deeply appreciate the time you all took to join us for this conversation about the Lorain County Racial Audit. Um, like Emily said, definitely make sure we continue this conversation and not leave it here. Um, utilize Padlet, reach out to the staff at the North Family Foundation or the Center for Community Solutions um, if you have anything that you think of after this Zoom meeting today. And we want to make sure that we continue to share out other convenings around racial equity, training events, and discussions so we all can continue to work toward an equitable community. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.